Hi, folks. I'm Huey Poplock, and this is Learning Chromebooks from the Tech for Senior group. Uh, usually it's myself and Ron Brown, but Ron's got family in from overseas. He gets to see them, I think it's the first time in a few years. He's got a grandson, and so he's doing the family thing uh, much of this month and next month. So uh, he will not be here today. Uh, he will uh, still get the recording ready and post it up on YouTube probably sometime today or tomorrow. So you'll be able to rewatch whatever you miss or don't understand today. I have, if you'll see, there's two pictures of me besides the uh, video of me. And that's because I have my Chromebook and my Flex machine also online. I updated both of them in the last two days, Flex this morning and the Chromebook uh, a couple of days ago, because I haven't been using them. I have been so busy playing with the AI, mm -hmm. I haven't been doing much with the uh, Chromebooks. So I am now at uh, version 114 on my Chromebook, and Flex is up to 116. So they are continuing to update Flex, and I have no idea what they're doing. I don't hear anything about Flex. But at least they're continuing the software and the uh, the ability to have Flex. And for those of you who may not know, Flex is the Chrome OS on either a PC or a Mac. And so you can take an old computer and install it and run what is comparably a Chromebook, except it won't run any of the Android programs. But it does run as... A, a nice little notebook, and it's that's what I'm using is a uh, an HP that was a PC, and it uh, runs fine. I can do all of the you know use Google Docs and use the website and uh, go, go to web pages and so on. So yeah, it, it works fine. I just don't have some of the apps, but for the most part, I don't use a lot of them anyway. So uh, it's a nice little machine that was just the uh, one that wasn't being used. And then, of course, my Chromebook. I'm keeping it up to date, but uh, it's it's getting it's getting up there. It's about a, it's about four years old now. But I think I got about three about three more years before it's uh, AUE, and it'll be out of date. And then I have a an old Acer sitting on a shelf that is out of date, and so I don't know what to do with it. I don't want to give it away because it's you can't update it. And I don't want to throw it away. So I, it sits on my shelf. But anyway, I've got a few things to uh, cover with you. And then I am going to do what I do on my Windows SIG, go through a couple of articles about some things that I didn't have time to do a video on, or I didn't understand them enough to do a video on. John, you have your hand up. Just real quick. You say you've got when, uh, a Chromebook got to end of life. You can't wipe it clean and install Flex on it? No. No, because it the Chromebooks have a chip which doesn't allow it to replace or do anything with the, the operating, operating system. system. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, there there are there are articles out there that tell you that you can open up the computer and then that may be just a, a chip that you can take off of the motherboard or it may not be and if you take it off other things may not work either so i just said no i'm not i'm not going to go through all that effort i don't have a reason to so thank you so but the flex is you know it's free and so if you've got an old pc you can install it and have at least a chromebook for kids grandkids or yourself just to to browse the web and do a few things where you don't have to lug out the the bigger laptop you may have or turn on your desktop or something. So today, let's I've got a few uh, things to share with you. I hope they make sense. I did them very late last night and the night before, but how uh, they work. How to enable Chrome's reading mode. I'm Huey Poplock. Chrome's reading mode simplifies web pages, removes ads, and makes articles easier to read. Enable it by going to Chrome's Flags page. Reading online content can be frustrating experience. 
Websites are often littered with intrusive ads, which can make it difficult to focus on the content. While we understand that ads are necessary to support these websites, they can be too much of a good thing. The business of online publishing is a delicate balance. On one hand, websites need to generate revenue from ads in order to survive. On the other hand, too many ads can alienate readers and drive them away. There is no easy solution to this problem. However, I believe that it's important to find a balance between supporting websites and minimizing the impact of ads. I encourage you to consider using a less aggressive ad blocker or whitelisting websites that you support. However, Google's got an awesome new answer for us. It's a smart system that empowers you to view a sane, sensible, and even enjoyable version of any web page you're viewing. It will be free from ads and other distractions and optimized for easy reading. It will even be customizable. If you want to take control of exactly which fonts, colors, and spacing settings are present, and despite all of that, it will still technically allow ads to be shown and the page's full original form to load at the same time, whether or not you actively view it. Google actually announced the new Chrome reading mode feature back in March, but the version of Chrome that includes it still hasn't rolled out broadly, which means most of us are still stuck waiting. That Chrome version is currently scheduled to start making its way into the world soon for most desktop operating systems, and following it will be the version for Chromebooks. Here's the secret to enabling Chrome's reading mode now, no matter what kind of computer you're using. The reading mode in Chrome streamlines web pages for easy reading. To enable it, access Chrome's flags, search enable reader mode, and enable the feature. So this is step by step, and I will show you some screenshots of this. Open up Chrome on your computer. Type chrome colon slash slash flags into the browser's address bar. Type reading mode into the search box at the top of the screen that comes up. See the line labeled reading mode. Click it and click the box next to it and change its setting from default to enabled. Click the blue restart button at the bottom of the screen and you're all set. So at the top left, you'll see you type in Chrome colon slash slash flags. It will then take you to where you have to fill in the search box and type in reading mode. It will take you to the reading mode. It will be default. You want to change the default to enabled as I have in the top left. And once you do that, you'll then have the reading list in which you, when you click on it, it will give you the reading mode. So here is a sample page. We've clicked on the reading mode and we're seeing it on the right hand side plus the regular web page on the rest of the page. What the nice thing about this is, here's, here it is again full screened, but you'll notice two little lines and I'll try to move my arrow here and hopefully you'll see that there's two little lines that you can click and drag this over so you can find that it will fill up more of the page than the one, the part that has the ads in it. You can also change the font and you can change the background. You can change the space between the letters. So there's a lot you can do with the reading mode. The benefits, you can enable Chrome reading mode to focus on the content of a web page without distractions. This feature improves readability and reduces eye strain. Chrome's reader mode lets you customize your reading experience. You can adjust text size, font, and background color for maximum comfort. That's how to enable Chrome's reading mode 
I'm Huey Poplock. And it also works on your PC. Uh, the only difference is where it says restart on the Chromebook, it says relaunch on the PC at the bottom once you get through the steps. But it's just, you can turn on the flags. I did it this morning on my PC and I'm gonna actually, uh, we'll look at some articles here in a little bit and it will use that. I've been using the immersive reader in the Microsoft Edge. Now I can use this and we can actually look at the same page so you can see pictures and so on while you're looking at the page. So we'll take a look at that after we get through the other two uh, videos I have. Any questions or comments about that? It was a, like two seconds to do it on my Chromebook. I'd already enabled it on my Windows Chrome browser. So now it's, I've got it on both, very easy to do. Yep. We and and eventually, eventually they will make it part of uh, Google Chrome, the Chrome OS. It'll probably be the next, uh, probably 115, although there may be an update to 114. So uh, we'll see. But if you want it before then, you can have it on both your uh, desktop and on your Chromebook or or. There's a there's a question from Olive Cousin, but I think we'll wait until after the, your next two videos because it's a little off topic from this. Oh, okay, sure. All right, so let me go ahead and share again. How to maximize productivity on your Chromebook. Learn how to enhance your working environment with these useful Windows snapping options on Chromebooks. I'm Huey Poplock. You're familiar with this in Windows and in a Chromebook, where you click on the box and you get a full screen. You click on the two boxes and it goes back to just a normal screen. That little box in the upper right corner of every browser or app window that you've got, open usually lets you either maximize the window if it isn't already in such a state or restore it down to a non full screen size if it's already maximized. Once you activate your Chromebook's new window layout setup, hovering over that box will reveal an insanely useful set of new window snapping options. Chrome OS is in a constant state of evolution with new releases landing every four weeks and new features more or less always under development and begging to be discovered. The best part of that setup is that unlike most other platforms, including even Android, Google's latest and greatest Chrome OS features are typically tucked away behind a special switch and available on any Chromebook long before they're launched to the masses. And this is what's going to be. You can have half screens, partial screens, full screen, and then the float. What do we mean by all of this? Well, when you have installed it, and I'm going to explain how to do that a little bit later, but when you've installed it, you can take a window that's open in your Chromebook, and you can click it to be half a screen, partial screen, full or a float. So let's make it half a screen. We do that and then we can open up another screen and we can decide whether to just have it that size or maybe make it the other half of the screen. We'll click the other half to the right and there it is. Now you've got two screens. You can go back and forth between them and it works very nicely on a Chromebook. You can open up a dock. You can open up something else in that window. You can have Google Docs open on that window and take notes on what you're seeing on the left-hand side. You can have two windows, or you can make it one-third, put the window on the right as a third, and then you can have the other is either separate or make them two-thirds of the screen. Now here we have a full screen. Now to get out of the full screen, you'll see when I when I clicked on the right click of my mouse, it says at the top, exit full screen, because at the top, you don't see an X, you don't see anything to get you out of it. It is truly a full screen. And so you have to right mouse click and then click exit full screen before you'll have access to get you out of that screen. 
With a single click, you can snap whatever app or window you're looking at into half screen state so that it takes up exactly 50% of your vertical display real estate. A partial screen state, shifting it into a two thirds or one third width arrangement, or a full screen state. You can also hover over either specific side within those first two options to zap your current app or window specifically into the left or right part of the respective structure. But the best part of this feature comes with the final option, one called float. Click that within any app or window you've got open and whatever you're looking at will snap down into a small box in the bottom right corner of your screen. In that state, your app or window will always stay on top of anything else you're viewing. That gives you an easy way to keep anything perpetually visible as a point of reference while you work on other stuff. In the right situation, that can be a shape-shifting productivity superpower that saves you from endless toggling back and forth or screen width compromises. Anytime you want to keep something in constant view, be it a calculator, your calendar, a caricature of a caribou, you name it. Just hit that hidden option and bam, it'll remain above everything and visible, no matter what else you might be doing. So, are you ready to activate it on your own Chromebook? Well, clear about 20 seconds in your schedule and let's make it happen. The five steps, all easy as can be. First, open up your new browser window in whatever Chromebook you've got in front of you. You type in Chrome colon flags into its address bar. Then you type the window layout into the search box on the screen that comes up. And we're going to, I'm going to show you these, these screens in just a moment. See the line labeled New Window Layout Menu. Click the box next to it and change it from Default to Enabled. Click the blue Restart button at the bottom of the screen and away you go. So here's what you do. You put in Chrome colon slash slash flags. When you do that, it will then bring up a window and you want to do a search for window layout. When you put window layout in there, it will find the new window layout menu. It will be set at default. It's a drop down, click it and change it from default to enabled. Once it's enabled, you're ready to go. And that's it. Once your Chromebook restarts, you can simply hover your cursor over that maximize or restore box in the upper right corner of any app or window and you'll find the new options just that we just finished exploring. How to maximize productivity on your Chromebook. I'm Huey Poplock. So they finally added what Windows has had for a while and that I use a lot and now I'm glad to see that it is in the Chrome OS. And you can see it's very easy to set up. And again, it will be, if you don't want to do all of that, it'll be added probably in the next version, hopefully. Any comments or questions about this video? John, I see you had put something in the uh, chat. I didn't read what it was. You're muted. Sorry about that. I thought I'd click the button, but it didn't click. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, Bill says, I'm anxious to try the split screen to see if I can open full transcript in one screen with the speaker mode on the other screen. That should be an interesting one. And like I, I mentioned I've been using the split screen with Windows for even before it became automatic when it was still a manual issue. Yeah. Uh, and you could do up to four, well, probably even more than that. But uh, it was a, it's a really nice feature. And I'm pleased to see Chrome has caught up and it's, I just turned it on. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And just so, briefly before we go on, the other thing that I had a question on, Huey, did your old Acer system have a CD drive? If so, it may be useful to access old data CDs when occasionally needed. No, it didn't. It was a, it was, it was a Chromebook and it did not have a CD drive in it. I do have a USB we got somebody sitting out there. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. 
I, I did have a, and I do have a USB. I think it's a writer reader that I, I it was not expensive. I bought it several years ago, but it, it's it's a USB, and I can plug it. I have plugged it in to the uh, Chromebook, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, and it, I got it to work. And I also had, but I know I had it working on the PC. We've got one now at the computer club because of everything we have. No, none of the systems have CD, DVD burners or t players. Yep. No, no yep. more optical devices included. And so that's been, uh, and they work very well. I just used it the other day to, to show somebody what was on their DVD. Yeah. And I know Stu is on, on this from the Tampa group. And there's a few others of you who are uh, members of other groups. If you want to use any of these videos, I've, I'll be posting them up on uh, my YouTube channel, and you're by all means welcome to use them. They're short enough that you can use them in the course of one of your meetings. Uh, so feel free to do so. Got one more to show you. Pixel Android tablet versus the Chromebook tablet. I'm Huey Poplock. Both Pixel and Chromebook tablets offer Android apps, but the Chromebooks are better for productivity while pixels are better for media consumption. The main difference between an Android tablet and a Chromebook tablet is the operating system they run. The Pixel tablet was released this week. It's engineered by Google to be more helpful at home and in your hand. Place it on a charging speaker dock for great sounding music and video streaming. Control your smart home and say, hey, G, for hands-free help. It's all powered by the Google Tensor G2 chip, and it's the perfect companion to a Pixel phone. The key features of a Pixel Android tablet, lightweight and portable design, high resolution display for clear and vivid visuals, and fast and powerful processor for smooth performance. The key features of the Chromebook tablet, lightweight and portable design, long battery life for all day use, access to Google Play Store for Android apps and games. The Pixel Android tablet has a sleek, modern look with a high resolution display and a powerful processor. Chromebook tablet is more affordable and has a detachable keyboard in some cases for versatility. The Pixel Android tablet offers more versatile and powerful apps while the Chromebook tablet provides better web browsing experience and longer battery life. Here are some comparisons. The operating system is Android for the tablet, Android tablet, and it's the Chrome OS for the Chromebook tablet. So there's a difference in the operating system. The app ecosystem is the Google Play Store for the Android tablet. And the Chromebook uses the Google Play Store, Linux apps, and the Google Web Store. Keyboard and mouse support is optional on the tablet. It's optional, but more common on the Chromebook. Productivity features is limited in the Android tablet. It's much more robust, including support for file management, office apps, and extensions on the Chromebook tablet. As far as security updates, it'll vary by manufacturer on the Android tablet, but the Chromebook tablet will have regular updates for up to eight years. The price is typically less for the Android tablet, typically more expensive for the Chromebook tablet. However, the Pixel tablets will be priced at $499 and $599, while Chromebooks range anywhere from $200, sometimes even less, to around $2,000. So there are many more choices for Chromebooks. Productivity features. Productivity features on the Chromebook tablets offer more robust pro productivity than the Android tablets. This includes support for file management, office apps, and extensions. 
Hardware differences, many of the Chromebooks either have a removable keyboard or the screen folds 180 degrees to make it into a tablet. In conclusion, both tablets offer great features, but Pixel Android tablet is ideal for entertainment, while Chromebook tablets is better for work and productivity. Ultimately, the best choice for you will depend upon your individual needs and preferences. The Pixel tablet that came out this week has a dock that comes with it. And that dock has a speaker in it. And it's geared for you to have it set on the dock where you can view it while it's there. So you're hearing a nice sound come out of it and you can watch a movie or uh, watch some TV, something like that. That's what it's geared for. Where of course the Chromebook is more for productivity and uh, use everyday comput computing. And you can get the and all of the Android apps uh, will work fine on the Chromebook, maybe not on the uh, Pixel. Uh, some will work, but because of the fact that it it may have some issues, but the screen is much clearer and uh, on the Pixel, and but it's you know six five six hundred dollars where you can get a well the Chromebook tablets run about that in that category, maybe a little bit higher. Sometimes they're on sale and you can get them less. So if you're looking for a tablet, you could do what I have. And I've got a Dell 15 inch. It makes a pretty big tablet, but what I can do is fold it all the way back and then use it as a tablet. So it is a, a clamshell as well as a tablet. Jolin, you have your hand up. Yeah, I am I have a Samsung Android tablet, the Galaxy Tab S7 or six, I'm sorry. This is the third one I've owned. I really, really enjoy using it. I have always gotten a uh, a case keyboard, you know, a keyboard combination, mm -hmm. case and keyboard, so it's a tablet. Or And I use it as much as a little computer. Uh, we have a Dropbox folder full of over 9,000 lyric sheets for our music group. Uh, so it, it that also, and I can see the advantages of having that, which is a pick up and go versus the, uh, sounds like the Pixel is much more of a home tablet kind of thing. I mean, you could grab it and go, but you'd have to have a case for it and and uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's, it's geared fascinating, for and I'll probably get one eventually. <laughs> and watching movies and so on. So if you're going to be traveling, you're going to be on a plane or something. You're going to have it on there. You're not going to be watching it through the internet, but right. you'll download it in, into right. the uh, device. I have a uh, one of the Amazon tablets that uh, I think I paid less than $100 for. And, and tablets, it, yeah. yeah, and, and it also, it's it's it, it's not a, something to use for productivity, but it is very nice to watch, uh, download and watch a movie or watch some TV or something on it. And I find the way I use my Samsung is for productivity as much as anything else. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice, but the, the, the fact that we have so many amazing options so that depending on what you need and what you do with it and how you work uh, or play, uh, the availability is just amazing. Bill? Can you cast from either one of those? The, the uh, Pixel, you can. And, and actually, I, th I think I read where you can uh, use the, because it's Google, you can uh, use uh, the Chromecast. Right. And, and my, from my Chromebook, I have USB-C, and then I have a USB-C. In fact, I had it in my hand, but it's it's not handy. I have a USB-C to HDMI cable, and I can plug that in and then plug it into the TV, and I can watch anything from my Chromebook on, on the TV without casting uh, using a wire. But I'm sure that there are ways for it to uh, be cast wirelessly as well. And you know, we, they, uh, uh, Facebook makes a portal that would be kind of in that same ball game with a new Google device. And also Amazon has a very nice one too. Uh, you know, they're, they're all in that more than a hundred dollar range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got one of those Facebook portals. It's just a camera and a microphone that you can hook to your TV. Right. 
and, and but you can do Zoom meetings with it. Yeah, which, mm-hmm. which I I played with uh, back just before COVID. I thought it would be a, a good uh, tool to have for user group meetings, but we never got a chance to use it for the, that. Well, I did a couple of Zoom meetings on it, and that's it. Still sits in front of my TV and doesn't get used. I can I can do a Zoom meeting on the portal. But yeah. if I try to do a hybrid meeting, it opens up one more sound source in the room. And uh, and you start getting that tremendous back feed, you know, uh, that we're all familiar with, with Zoom. Yeah, I and, and some of the cameras that are out there now, I just got one this past week that's 120 degrees. I'm not using it because it shows too much and not enough of me. I'm just a little <laughs> speck in the center of it. And uh, and that doesn't have any software to make it otherwise, although Zoom does have a way you can turn the HD off. But then I got uh, black strips down each side of my uh, my video. Uh, any other comments, questions from anybody? So there's some things now that you can start playing with on your Chromebook if you have it. And uh, you can rewatch the video to see how to do these things. It's very simple. Uh, I guess Jolin did it while while I was talking about it. It's it's very quick and and it actually worked quite well for me as well as for her. So uh, give them a try. Now, what I'd like to do, uh, let's field a few questions if you have any, and then I have some material that we can kind of take a look at, and we'll use the uh, readers mode in. Chrome to do so. Anybody have any questions or comments? Is there anything in the chat, Jolin? Nothing. Nothing new. Comments. I. I did. I was curious. How often do people? How often do y'all update? Check to update your Chromebook to make sure that you have the latest version. Because I know in some case I don't know. I don't think it does it automatically. Does it? Or I guess it. It, it will if you keep it on. Okay, so it has to be on 24-7 for it to catch that. Well, not 24-7 necessarily, but on for some period of time. And I usually shut mine down when I'm not using it. So I have to manually go and update. Also, too, you get uh, in notification that uh, uh, there is an update available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I just, I mean, because I use... Uh, the Chrome, every time I open my Chrome, I don't use it every single day. So every time I open it, the, one of the first things I'll do is go and hit settings and go into about Chrome and see if there's an update. And so that's about once a week I check. It doesn't always have an update, but very often it does. So I was just curious if anybody else has a routine that they use. That's all. I have nope. a question on that too. It seems like when I go into the help and about, it doesn't let me check for updates. I have to go into settings, settings. and do a search. Yes. No, no, do a search. Just go down the left hand panel to about Chrome. It, no, it's not there. If, I, if I hit settings, about Here Chrome yes, is the very last item on the left hand panel in settings. Right. And I've seen it on my wife's that way but on mine it uh, doesn't come up i have to actually uh, do a search for uh, update and then it pops right up interesting but it's different than hers who's the uh, make and model uh, do you Question. have that doesn't have it that way uh, these are a zeus uh, i'm not sure what model they are they're about two years old uh, you said uh, Asus? No, Asus. A-S-U-S. Asus. Anyway, uh, I have some of those, and I never had that issue that you're talking about. I have an Asus. Well, well like I say, hers is identical to mine. Hers, you know, automatically does it, uh, comes up with update. Mine, I have to go in there and do that. I do have some <laughs> issue sure. with mine, though, that the wireless doesn't work. So it's wired. Sometimes it's the way you've got the video set up. What, whatever, uh, if you've got the box, the window too big in the center of your screen, 
I will take that menu off the screen. <laughs> oh. I am using an external monitor uh, on this one. I uh -huh. wonder if that's changing the video oh, setting. If you stop the primary, that could be a that could be an issue. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. I've got the interest in it. In it, I mean, it's always right there for me under settings about Chrome OS right. at the bottom. So I, that's surprising that it wouldn't have it. You know, uh, really. Uh, Ron has talked about this several times on oh. on these broadcasts. Uh, as long as you turn the C Chromebook off at night, whenever you turn it on in the morning, it will look for an update. If it finds it, it will download it and put it on your Chromebook. And then the next time you turn it off and turn it back on, it will switch to the new version. It will do it automatically for you, but it happens each time you turn the Chromebook on and turn it off. Now, if you put the Chromebook to sleep, that means if you just close the lid on it, uh, it's plugged in, uh, you, you haven't really turned it off. And so it won't look for that update. So you've got to turn it off, now, you know, shut down. And you can do that by clicking down on that taskbar at the bottom, and there's an icon up on the top, on the far left, that, that, that you use to just shut down. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. See it? Let me minimize this. And this is how I check. Yes. Are you seeing that? Yeah, good. Yes. All right. Yeah. And then what I do is I come up here to the settings, right. I click that. And I come over here to about Chrome OS. Right. And then it'll show what version I have. And then I can tell it to check for updates. Oh, it's updating. Yep. <laughs> and I just updated it just updated uh, yesterday it. or today. Yeah. Because mine was 114.0.2. Something or other. Yeah, I got well, five, seven, and mine we'll, says we'll, we'll, eight. See. we'll see what it updates it oh, to. I but. had I have one forty three. You have one thirty nine. And like uh, Stu said, uh, it is downloading and installing it in a secondary area, and then when you shut off the computer, the next time you turn it on, it does that flip to the new version. Yep. It's almost done. It's very fast, so it's it's probably a uh, just a small update. Yeah, like I said, I have five seven three five dot one three nine, and I had one one four five. I think I said. So yeah, it's uh, little little bits and pieces they send us. Yeah, but <laughs> you can see how I this is how I update. Mm -hmm. uh, because I I turn usually turn it off when I'm not using it, so I don't have it on all the time yeah. for it to update automatically. And then I'll show you how I update the uh, apps as well here, because I'm not going to restart the computer because I'll lose my connection to Zoom, and that's a pain to no, 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 no. try to do that and still be online with you guys. That's right. Does it have so, to do each one individually as it goes? No. It's Let's hope it finishes soon. But yeah, I'd well, it's it slowed down all of a sudden. Yeah, well, it does. Yeah, there, there it goes. goes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to minimize it because I'm not going to restart it right now. And mm -hmm. what I do here is I'll open this. Let's see. No, I... Uh, I keep Play Store in my task. Yeah. Or yeah. In, excuse me, in, the, in the launch. What is it called? Yeah. Launcher. Launcher. I open up, yeah, I open up Play Store. Oh, my taskbar. And I come up to my sign in and then manage apps and device. And then it's checking, there's five updates pending. And mm -hmm. oh, let's see, overview and manage. Well, I usually go to see details to see what's ready to be updated. Yeah, yeah that's it. And then there's an update all button. 
and you just let it have at it. And you can watch it while it's doing it. Or or minimize it and go do something else. Yeah. Well, I'm going to unshare here if I can figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> Up at the top? The no. X at the top. No, that gets me out of the, what I'm doing there, but I want to get out of Zoom. Oh. And let's see. It's not letting uh, me do Do you that. want me to stop the sharing? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Good. All right. Thank you. Yes. As co-host, that's, that's an option. That's all. Yeah. Yep. So any comments? So you can see where you can do the updating yourself manually. If it if you're like me and you shut down or you don't have it on all the time, you can update both the operating system and you can update the uh, the individual apps. And you can pick and choose them if you want. I usually just hit update all and just let it update. Some, when I did it earlier this week, it's been it's been a, a month or so since I last did it, and I think there were thirty or forty I apps that had an update. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let me uh, show you uh, one of the articles that I was going to cover. Let's see, open up this. Oh, I got to share my screen first, otherwise you can't see it. This is true. And go back exactly. to basic. I don't want to do that. Excellent, excellent, Clark. Absolutely. Okay. I always, I very often check before both Zoom and Chrome before a, a session like this. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, open up. I have a program here, or I should say a, an extension that lists all the articles I pre program in there. So all I have to do is say open URLs, mm -hmm. and you can see that it's opening them all. And uh, here's one of them. And I'll full screen it. Here we, this, this no. gentleman, uh, Dennis, writes this about Chromebooks. It's one of the best blogs out there to read about Chromebooks. Um, did you put the name in the? You, you'll in, find it in the bottom. The yeah. Oh, we wrote this article. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's so very good. So what I want to do here is let's see. You click up here, this little box here, and that gives me the reading list. And if I click it, I go to reading mode. I had to remember how to do this. Mm -hmm. And here's the article. And now I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it across so we can see more of it. I can make it bigger or smaller. And so here's what's in the now available Google Chrome 114 release. There were several things in here and I don't know whether I've got them or I don't. And uh, I really didn't have the, uh, the time to be able to spend to determine it. This is usually the part that Ron does. And so instead of doing that, we'll just go ahead and look at the article. There's more than a dozen security fixes in the Google Chrome 114. And then you can customize Google Chrome in a new way. And this is where I have a blank new tab page it is typically what you do, but you can click customize Chrome option on a new page. So let's, well, I don't know if it, that'll work on here or not. So I'm not going to try to do it. I, I'm on my Windows machine right now. But you can click the Customize Chrome option on a new tab page. But the options are also available in the sidebar. And this is the area where the Google is adding more features, such as a more modern reading list, which is what we're using, Bookmarks Manager, and Journeys uh, function, to name a few. So he's saying in this article, here I'm using the customized Chrome option in the side panel for a relaxing bluish theme. I did a, a light a light blue. He did it right here. You can see the picture that he did it there with a blue screen. Let's come down here a little bit more. No, I don't want to show the, the article. Isn't it going to let me scroll? 
I, I think you have to click that button on there to pull the article. Nope. Yeah, I don't want to. Can't no. you scroll down the actual reading panel? Yeah, okay. but that doesn't that doesn't bring this down. If I click this, it's going to expand it back up. I think. Well, it'll, it'll give you the whole. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. Yep. Okay. That's that did it. I was afraid it was going to just mm -hmm. make this smaller, but it didn't. All mm -hmm. right. So we just learned something. Uh, so it's got the. Let's see if there's any other pictures in here. You know what it did? It did the same. It cleared the photos. Oh, there it we go. It cleared the photos. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. They're just taking a little longer to load. Yeah. So you can do uh, some colors and you can change things. Uh, more security. Let's see. We talked about that. Uh, developers can build for the side panel. So there's going to be things that they're going to be able to put in a side panel that apparently isn't in this version. Uh, let me full screen this and bring this over a little bit more. Okay. Google Password Manager gains a few tricks. I I do use the password manager, Google's password manager. I find it very handy. However, this writer doesn't, and he realizes many Google Chrome users do. And the password manager in Chrome 114 will group similar passwords together. I presume it really means similar sites or services will be grouped. Second, if you want one-click access to the Google Password Manager, there is an option to add a shortcut to it. Again, this is for the Chrome and I'm on a PC, so I can't really show you this, but this article, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, and I'll stick it in the notes. And let's see what else. And that's pretty much that article. And then there's two thoughts on what's now available in Google Chrome 114 release extensions, front and center. Uh, he talks about some some of those. And Chrome OS 114 stable lacks most of the features that were in Chrome 114 beta. Okay, so they didn't add a lot of things to it. So that was one article. Now, if I go to the other tab, I don't think it will, you know, it keeps it in the same mode. That's interesting. I thought it would clear it and I could, each one could be separate. And then uh, this Chromebook X, this is Chromebook X, Google's new standard for Chrome OS. I tried reading this and I really, maybe somebody here understands or knows a little bit more about this than I do. I had just seen this article in the last couple of days, and I'm not sure what it is, and I haven't had a chance to look it up. When does a Chromebook become more than just a Chromebook? That's a question that Google has set out to answer with its upcoming Chromebook X program for high-quality laptops and tablets. So apparently there's going to be two levels of the operating system. For many people considering which Chromebook they should buy, the answer could honestly be almost any of them. Chrome OS devices consistently provide a solid baseline for the most basic needs for a computer, a fully featured web browser, file management, and access to productivity apps. But over the last uh, five years or so, Chromebooks have grown to become capable of so much more. And through the Android app support, Chromebooks now have access to powerful productivity apps and video editing suites like LumaFusion. So you can run full Linux desktop programs on a Chromebook, including audio workstations like Audacity, developer tools like Android Studio, and even some of your favorite Steam games. And so, of course, so most of that requires better than baseline hardware to run smoothly. In the case of gaming, Chrome OS only allows Steam to be installed on a select few of the latest mid-range and high-end Chromebooks. To put it another way, if you want to get the most out of Chrome, what Chrome OS offers, uh, you currently need to know uh, just enough jargon to know a premium or a mid-range consumer Chromebook from a cheap student-oriented one. So there's going to be different levels now, uh, and the gaming is available. So let's, here's where it talks about Enter Chromebook X. For the past few months, Google has been preparing a new branding 
for above average devices from Chromebook makers. Notably, we haven't seen any signs of the Google making a Chromebook X device of its own, which is honestly a shame considering how long it's been since a Pixel book has been released. Chromebook, the Chromebook X brand, which could cha change before launch, will appear somewhere on a laptop or tablet's chassis with a mark that could be as simple as an X next to the usual Chromebook logo. There should also be special boot screen instead of the standard Chrome OS logo. So it doesn't tell you too much about it, but it was an interesting article and it's something we should keep our eyes open to. And when you start hearing the term Chromebook X, at least you'll uh, understand that it's still the Chromebook OS, but it's going to be just a little bit of an upgraded version. And uh, there was another article here about it. The Chromebook X is Google's high quality laptop initiative. And again, there's an article. I will put all of these links in the chat box here in a moment. And then there was uh, this Material U. And I, I didn't want to start playing with this, but apparently you can now, uh, you still have to go into the flags because they haven't released this yet. But if you have a background picture, it will pick up the colors from it and you can actually set up your whole color system for your for your Chromebook to be working off of the, whatever your background is. And so you can change the look and feel of your Chromebook. So let's find these, what's that plus? And let me, uh, well, they're all highlighted. So I can just do a control C and throw it into the chat box. So there's all of those. Hey, hey Huey, what's, yeah. what's the name of that extension you're using right now? It's called text to extract. Uh, let's see, is it tell me here? Yeah, open multiple URLs. Okay, that's nice. Yes, been using it for years. And I use it every Sunday for my, or not every Sunday, but every uh, window SIG on the second Sunday of every month, been using it for a couple of years. And oh. what I do is I just take the whole list of all of the pages I'm going to cover, drop it into there, and it just opens all the tabs up oh. and, and it has it ready for me. Yeah, you don't have to go to a blank screen in between. That's very nice. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me shot, stop my share here. And uh, we've just about used up an hour. Yeah, we I hope, Yeah, I hope you've gotten something out of it. Uh, a little bit different uh, without Ron, but I think we still managed to get through. And thank you, Jolin, for helping me. Absolutely. And Stu, of course, uh, mm -hmm. and Tim uh, and several others of you who uh, either run groups or are part of groups. So appreciate you being here. And those of you who are here to, to suck up the information, that's why we're here. So uh, question, does everybody know how to save the chat so that they can keep those uh, links that Huey just gave us? Okay. If not, go ahead and tell them. Okay. In the chat, down at the very bottom, below where it says type message here, there are four little icons. If you click on the three dot menu, more, the very first option is save chat. And the chat is saved in a folder. You can actually see it'll give you a chat saved and show in folder. It puts it in a documents folder on Windows. I'm not sure about Apple uh, called Zoom under the documents folder. So all of the uh, chats that I've saved through the years are still there because... Yeah, it'll be in a subfolder with today's date. Yep. So that's terrific. I look forward to going through those. All right, a video will be ready sometime in the next day. And I'll send out a notice with the link to it. Okay, will you have the, uh, are you gonna do the little individual videos? Are they posted on your site too? They will be. Okay, super, cause I'd like to share yeah, them. I just finished them late last night and I did not get a chance to get them up there. I'll keep my eye out for them. Yeah, and by all means, you're, you're all are welcome to use them. Uh, Bill, you had a question? No, comment on that uh, chat when you copy it. 
make sure that if you're going to put it into your uh, email or whatever to yourself, that you use, uh, what is it? Enter is plain text, because if you try the control V, you'll just get a bunch of black. But then you can, because well, it depends if you were on a, because like on my computer, I have, I use the dark mode. So it'll be white lettering on dark text. And you just have to select the text and change it back to black text on white. Okay. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's, that's why I figure if you save the text, if you save the chat, it's easier to go in and uh, grab it, grab the links from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the control V I found puts it in there as, like you say, with the graphic mm-hmm. rather than as the plain text where exactly. you can copy it out and get the links where you well, want to go. The, they're still there. They're just in a different format is all. Right. So. All right, folks. Thank you very thank much for attending. I hope you got something you. out of it. Hey, and, thanks, you. Uh, hopefully thank we'll you. see you Monday on Tech for Senior. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.